Je veux commencer par remercier la Première ministre Meloni et les Italiens de leur accueil cette, cette semaine. Dans un monde incertain, c'est important d'être ici pour renforcer nos relations avec nos alliés. C'est en travaillant ensemble qu'on peut le mieux défendre nos valeurs et trouver des solutions pour affronter les grands défis auxquels on fait face. With our allies this week here in Italy, we work together to address the many different challenges our world is facing today. With wars in the Ukraine and in the Middle East, with climate change affecting our lives, we need responsible leadership. This is what Canada is here to offer. We also discussed economic opportunities that will help all of us advance economic development and create good jobs around the world, including in Canada. Summits like these are an important moment to coordinate our efforts with friends and allies, and they matter to Canadians because security, prosperity, and stability benefit of us all. On security, President Zelensky joined us here in Italy this week, and I made it clear that Canada will keep supporting Ukraine until victory. I have long advocated for new and innovative ways to support Ukraine and impose costs on Russia for its invasion. Two years ago, Canada suggested freezing Russian central bank assets. That's exactly what the G7 did. Now, to bring forward the future interest earnings from frozen Russian sovereign assets, the G7 will provide loans to Ukraine. As the G7 finalizes the delivery of the extraordinary revenue acceleration loans, Canada stands prepared to contribute $5 billion Canadian in funding. These loans would provide Ukraine with approximately $69 billion Canadian as it continues to defend its freedom, sovereignty, and territorial integrity. On top of this, Canada also announced new sanctions on 11 individuals and 16 entities who supply key technology and electrical components in support of Russia's war of aggression. And I also want to mention that we're in the process of delivering four armored medical evacuation vehicles to support Ukraine's armed forces. This is the first shipment of 50 armored combat support vehicles, all built in Canada in London, Ontario. Of course, we know that war is not only ravaging Ukraine. This week, with G7 allies, we also discussed the crisis in the Middle East. Canada is extremely concerned by the scale of the humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. Canada has been clear on calling for an immediate ceasefire, for the release of all hostages, for significant and sustained increase in humanitarian assistance, and to an enduring end to this crisis. So far, our country has provided $165 million in humanitarian funding for things like food, water, and medical assistance. We all need peace and stability in the Middle East, and Canada will continue to support efforts to achieve a just and lasting peace in the region based on a two-state solution. Évidemment, on ne peut pas parler de sécurité, de prospérité et de stabilité sans s'attaquer au changement climatique. J'ai toujours été bien clair avec nos alliés que c'est une question que le Canada prend très au sérieux. Et c'est pourquoi on agit avec des mesures significatives. Climate change is having an impact on food security. So to support vulnerable countries, especially in the Americas, Sub-Saharan Africa and Asia, we're allocating $200 million to the International Fund for Agriculture Development. In the Indo-Pacific region, we're helping mobilize private capital toward climate change mitigation and adaptation projects by delivering a $360 million repayable contribution to the Asian Development Bank. Le Canada fait aussi sa part dans le cadre du partenariat en matière d'infrastructure et d'investissement. Jeudi, on a souligné plusieurs mesures qu'on met de l'avant pour travailler avec le secteur privé afin de répondre à la demande en infrastructure dans les pays en voie de développement. Ces mesures comprennent 720 millions de dollars pour FinDev afin d'appuyer le développement durable, ce qui s'ajoute aux 750 millions de dollars annoncés en 2022 pour soutenir le mandat mondial de l'institution. Tout ce qu'on fait, que ce soit pour aider à la transition verte, pour l'égalité des genres ou pour les objectifs de développement durable des Nations unies, c'est dans le but de bâtir un monde plus prospère, plus stable et plus sécuritaire. 
Et ça, c'est bon pour tous, y compris pour la prospérité et la sécurité des Canadiens. This was a very productive summit. I want to thank again our Italian hosts. We are focused on fairness for everyone, on creating good jobs and economic growth, and Canada will, of course, continue to be a voice for peace, stability, and democracy. I look forward to the Summit for Peace in Ukraine in Switzerland today and tomorrow, where we'll work with partners on a plan to achieve a comprehensive, just, and lasting peace for Ukraine. And I very much look forward to hosting next year's G7 Summit in Canada, in Kananaskis, Alberta. Next year will be the 50th year since the first summit and the second held in beautiful Kananaskis. Can't wait to share all the glory of the Canadian Rockies with our friends and allies.